Hi, this is your host, Sabdi Bharatiya, and we are here at Cook.com Chicago, and today we have with us once again, Ram Ayengar, Chief Evangelist at Cloud Foundry Foundation. Ram, it's great to have you again on the show. Hello, Swapnil. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. Pleasure is all mine. Uh, first of all, we are here at KubeCon. Talk a bit about uh, what is Cloud Foundry Foundation doing at KubeCon? So there's a couple of very interesting projects owned by the foundation for the Kubernetes community. There's obviously a lot of overlap between the bigger themes, such as uh, architecting the future, the platform engineering focus, and a lot of the simplifying Kubernetes for the end user and the consumer, which Cloud Foundry, as you know, has always been doing. And so the two projects uh, that we want to place focus on are uh, Cloud Foundry Kurifi, which is a Cloud Foundry abstraction on Kubernetes, and Paketo build packs, which are an implementation of the cloud native build pack specification owned by the CNCF. Of course, we have talked about Purifi in past as well. Uh, talk a bit about you know how is the project progressing uh, from the technical point of view, and then we can also talk about how is the community receiving it. Sure, there's a lot of improvements that the community has built in terms of getting Purifi closer to engineering teams who want to try it before they actually you know, start to adopt it. A historical problem with Cloud Foundry has always been local installs. So we've now solved that with a very sophisticated local installer where you can get Kurifi running on a client cluster, running locally, get the Cloud Foundry experience for the developer on their laptops, uh, on local installs, on small workloads and things like that. What we're also announcing right now is support for Docker-based containers. So if you have a container-based workflow existing on your pipeline, you can use Kurifi for the deployment phase and you don't have to limit yourself to using containers or images that were created using Kurifi. It expands to images that are already existing in your container registry. And it's a very easy way to fit this into an existing workflow and get more people to try it. Uh, and talk about, you know, uh, how the community has received the project or, you know, adoption. So there's uh, obviously the big vendors uh, that use Cloud Foundry who are reporting a lot of, uh, you know, usage and things like that. Uh, we're waiting for some news about open source Kurifi becoming part of like bigger pipelines, but we are starting to see a lot of like individuals and hobbyists and uh, some people who are managing like fleets for their Kubernetes based deployments, starting to use Kurifi and try Kurifi. And they're, they're really enjoying the Cloud Foundry experience. Now, a lot of people in the community, they stop by our booth and keep saying, oh, I've tried Cloud Foundry in the past. I've loved it. I wish it existed on Kubernetes. And, you know, now we can go to them and say it does and, you know, show them the project. And they're very happy about it. They, we're getting a lot of uh, attention on that and a lot of awareness is being built for the project th that way. Can you also talk about the maturity of Purifi? Back when we spoke at Amsterdam and uh, Detroit before that, we identified a few things that made Kurifi still wait for kind of much broader public adoption. Uh, so we were limited on in terms of Docker support and we were limited in terms of the local deployment experience. We've solved those two. And then I think the big piece that we are working on resolving right now is services. So Kurifi right now can perform very well for like stateless workloads, but obviously a lot of workloads in real life are stateful workloads. And uh, we're in the process of solving for stateful workloads. So we want to get the services piece on there, which will bring a lot more parity with the existing Bosch based or VM based Cloud Foundry experience. And you know, once the services uh, piece of the puzzle is solved, then I think it's going to make Kurifi, uh, you know, ready for much larger deployments and much more real world sort of deployments. Do you have any time frame for that? Well, I'm hoping before Paris, but uh, we're, we're definitely optimistic that we'll do it before like. If you look at Cloud Foundry early days, you know, there are a lot of folks, you know, uh, they started using it and there are a lot of folks who are still using it. Yep. Uh, of course, everybody has Kubernetes in their mind. What I want to talk about is that how are people transitioning from Cloud Foundry to Kubernetes? 
at the same time, uh, where they see that Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes is going to coexist. Uh, some cases they might look at it as replacing. So, so what are you seeing with the existing deployments? So there's uh, two, three interesting trends that we are seeing. Uh, the first one, the one that I don't like is when you show them this uh, query fee experience, a lot of them are like, oh, this will make my migration to Kubernetes easier from Cloud Foundry. <laughs> so obviously, you know, we don't like that. But uh, if there's something that the community finds is very convenient, you know, it, it's still a win for us. The other thing that we're seeing is a lot of people want the Cloud Foundry experience. They like it. They don't want to move away from it. And, you know, a Kubernetes migration to them means or meant until this point that they let go of the Cloud Foundry experience. And so the fact that that is not true makes them very happy. And they're very happy to see that there's a project that's addressing a very specific need that they have. And so that's been the majority of people that have been uh, you know, stopping by and asking us and inquiring about what they can do. Um, I, I, can, I think there's like a last very small niche segment that's you know, starting to try Kubernetes through Cloud Foundry for the first time. And so, uh, like I said, it's, it's minuscule, but it does exist. And, you know, we're optimistic about growing that and preserving that community as well. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's very easy to write an epic, you know, technology off, you know, that, hey, you know what, the days are gone. But if you look at, you know, today also Unix is there, you know, yeah. mainframe actually runs the whole economy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, Docker containers, they are there. Uh, Linux kernel, you know, we cannot even say that is literally like baseline for all the technologies. Uh, OpenStack, you know. Oh, yeah. So uh, Cloud Foundry IC is also one of those technologies. Of course, this is not the shiny object anymore because the new things have come up. But, you know, a lot of companies are still not only relying on it, but they continue. So what kind of, you know, you see the, 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 the market is still there where you can say, hey, you know, these are the companies, I mean, you can name or not came or industries that will not, you know, be, uh, they need Cloud Foundry. So we've, we're seeing a lot of large development shops that have small ops teams continue to function with Cloud Foundry. Um, there was a um, set of people who were working at a major tractor vendor uh, without naming a name. Uh, and, and they said, you know, they were extremely happy about Cloud Foundry. There's a champion internally who said, let's continue to keep the, you know, Cloud Foundry culture alive. And they're only doing Kubernetes for the new applications for now. Extremely happy looking at Querifi and said that, you know, this is going to solve my problem uh, that I have. And so there's, there's all of these people that are just rooted in the Cloud Foundry ecosystem and they want Cloud Foundry for their uh, developers and they, they don't want to forego that DevX that they've built over so many years. And I was quoting to, now this is a KubeCon edition, right? So around the corner, there was a booth and I was quoting to that gentleman that there's just one platform that has really survived the Docker wave and the Kubernetes tsunami that came after that. And, you know, it's, it's going to continue to do well. I mean, like you said, we might not be the shiny new thing, but we're a thing and I'm happy for that. Okay, we have talked a lot about past, right? You know, Cloud Foundry deployments were there, blah, 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 you know. The, but let's also look at the, the market dynamics change in technology. Kubernetes is great. It was never meant to be easy, you know. When, uh, when I used to talk to the founders were like, that was not, it was not a technology that was created for, it was already being used internally in Google and, you know, it was released for everybody to, to, to use. So that was never the goal. But sometimes people are getting overwhelmed with the complexity. And, uh, and once again, it has nothing to do with Kubernetes complexity. That is the nature of the project. So do you see a room for when we look at the whole Cloud Foundry experience, you know, the whole CF push experience, where it can kind of bring a kind of breath of relief, you know, ease. We talked about that earlier that Cloud Foundry community can learn a lot of things from Kubernetes and Kubernetes can learn a lot of things from the developer experience. So let's look at future, you know. What role can Cloud Foundry play in this ecosystem where people are getting exhausted? So the first time I noticed this trend, Swapnil, was at Amsterdam. Um, I think Aparna, who's one of the co-chairs, she had a keynote talk where 
she had like a Yelp review of all the different Kubernetes capabilities. And so Simplicity got like a one star. And that's the first time I've seen the community admit publicly that this is a complex beast. It was never meant to be simple, never meant to be easy. Obviously, it's solving a very difficult problem. And by nature, it's, it's, it's going to be what it is. What I'm seeing in this edition is a lot of people are accepting an opinionated sort of path towards saying, okay, this is you know a good way to do ingress and load balancing and log monitoring and observability for your clusters. And people are happy to start with an opinionated path. And so one of the things that we've changed about Cloud Foundry also is we've made it from a more opinionated sort of framework to a much more open and composable framework. If you want to kick out our choice of Envoy for ingress and pull in Istio for you know one of n reasons, you can do that with you know Kurifi right now. And so I think the community in general is open to this notion of okay, give me an opinionated path, I'll try it. If I like it, I'll stick to it. If not, you know, I'll architect my way around and get a you know path for my developers that's more in tune with our needs and so i think there's a there's an interesting shift there uh, and so that has resulted in a good lesson for the cloud foundry community to learn from the kubernetes community and the cloud native community and in turn i think you know all of the learnings of the past 10 years about you know how we built a platform and you know we've tried so many things and failed at so many things and succeeded at so many more things is a huge history lesson for the cloud native community about you know how to go about architecting uh, platforms for the future of uh, cloud native of course there are a lot of things that you cannot talk about because they may be work in the community pipeline but in addition to Kurifi, is there any project or idea that you folks are looking at to help the Kubernetes community, because the fact is that Kubernetes is not going to be easy. It is going to remain complicated. Only thing we can do is to make it easy for, for, for customers to deal with that complexity. Yeah, so one of the projects that we're heavily invested in is known as Paketo Build Packs. Like I mentioned, it's an implementation of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation's buildpacks.io or Cloud Native Build Pack spec. So Paketo is fully open source. It's the only fully open source implementation of build packs that's available. It's available for a family of languages. Now what Paketo allows folks to do is build OCI compatible containers out of source code that they give, which is the first step of the Heroku experience and the Cloud Foundry experience and things like that. So it allows you to create a very homogeneous, uniform build process for any technology that you bring. So uh, build packs exist for stuff that's very common, like Node.js, to something that's very niche and specific as Jupyter Notebooks. And, and everything in between that spectrum is covered. So you can have C, C++, uh, Rust, and what have you, to very specific sort of uh, meta build packs that really can do uh, a Node.js front end with a PHP back end and some Java on the side, anything, right? So build packs is something that we are heavily invested in. We're very happy to note the sort of grassroots developer led adoption that it has seen. Uh, back in Detroit, you know, build packs was like on the side and just something we thought we'd mentioned, but the sheer number of people that came to us and said, hey, I use build packs and I have these questions and we want to get on the community, we want to contribute and things like that has been phenomenal. And it's been, uh, the volume has, you know, sort of increased in Amsterdam and at Chicago, it's been great. So we're fielding a lot of questions, increasing the community in a big way for Paketo build packs. And, you know, we're very happy with that. It's a part of the new Cloud Foundry experience, uh, but by itself, it's a great technology too. And we're seeing that for a lot of the other pieces that we're using uh, within uh, Cloud Foundry Kurifi. So like KPAC has its own sort of thing and uh, the other CNCF projects that we use have their own sort of thing. But then the build packs piece is something that, you know, we're heavily invested in. Uh, there's an upcoming announcement about a new Cloud Foundry member who's joining specifically for build packs. And so 
you'll be happy to hear that and it's it's impending so ram thank you so much for taking time out today and of course talk about cloud foundry in the kubernetes world or kubernetes the cloud foundry world the way you look at it thanks for all those insights and i would love to chat with you again thank you sure sapnil thank you for having me it's great to do this in person uh not just over our tiny uh, zoom windows and such but thank you so much for having me